Hello, and welcome again to Praxis Group International. My name is Mr. Hearn, and I am your TOEFL tutor. In this video, we're going to talk about how to take fewer but more relevant notes to help you answer questions in the TOEFL listening section. Now, before I show you these tips that'll help you to take fewer notes, I would like to talk to you about why we have difficulty in the listening section. From my experience, there are three main reasons. Number one, people think that the lecturers or the people in the conversations are just talking too fast. If that's the case for you, it's typically because we're translating from English to our native language to understand what the people are saying. If you're still translating while you're listening, you may not be ready for the TOEFL test. You may wanna spend a little more time listening to English, listening to songs in English, and uh, build your skills so that you can listen without translating. Beyond that, there are two major reasons that people have difficulty with the listening section. The first one is that people think that everything is important or they don't know what's going to be important. So they're writing notes about everything. And when they go to take the test, they answer the questions, they just have too many notes and they get lost. The other thing is that the opposite side of taking too many notes is that they don't take any notes because as they're trying to take notes, they can't understand what they're listening to. So they just simply stop taking notes and try to remember everything that was being said. Well, the test is designed that if you're not taking notes, they know that you will fall for certain wrong choices and they put those wrong choices in the test on purpose. So in other words, you have to take notes. Keep in mind that you may be a professional who is taking the TOEFL to get your professional license, but 90% of the people taking the TOEFL IBT are taking it in order to go to university in an English speaking country. And therefore each section is designed to test certain study skills. In the listening section, the study skills you're testing is how well you take notes. So let's get into some of the things that can help you to listen less, take fewer notes, but those notes that you take will really work to answer the question. Tip number one, listen for the introduction of the topic in lectures and for the purpose in conversation. The lectures will typically begin with the professor greeting the class and then giving a general statement of what the lecture will be about. Listen for the professor to introduce the topic. Sometimes the lecture will begin with a recap of the previous class, followed by the introduction of the topic of the current lecture. In either scenario, take notes of what the professor says the lecture will be about. Conversations and service counters, on the other hand, typically begin with a greeting between a college professor or an administrator and a student. Then, the student will state a purpose for the meeting near the beginning of the conversation. Take notes of the student's purpose for the meeting. Tip number two, listen for keywords and phrases. In each passage type, you will hear certain keywords or phrases that will cue you in to taking the notes you need to answer the questions. In general, when listening to lectures, listen for words such as theory, Example, cause, explanation, and views. Whenever you hear such words, write down what the speaker says next, including the related details. In problem solution conversations, write down the details that the speaker talks about following words such as these, problem, trouble, difficulty, or issue. In service encounters, words to listen for are requirement, form or application. Finally, in significant event conversations, listen for the speakers to say such words such as program, event, plans, participate, free or busy. Tip number three, pay attention to words with emphasis. During the lectures and conversations, you may hear words that are given emphasis. Pay attention to what is being said following these words 
and take notes of the main points. You will likely be asked a question related to the statement given emphasis. For example, the top layer, which is called the active layer, is frozen in the winter and spring, but thaws in the summer. For this sentence, you would take notes of the words active layer, frozen winter, thaws in summer. The question will ask you about the details of the active layer. One of the choices will be about it being frozen in winter and spring, but thawed in the summer. All you have to do is match your notes with the choice that's related. Tip number four. Pay attention to transition words and transitions. Listen for transition words. Typically, North American English grammar structure is the opposite of most languages in the world. So be particularly alert for opposite direction words. Words like despite, however, although, on the other hand, and but. You will hear them most often in the academic lectures but they may also appear in conversations as well. You should be aware of common transitions from the reading section. These transitions appear in lectures and conversations alike. This is a list of common transition words that you will hear in the TOEFL listening section. You can take a moment now to pause the video and write down these lists so that you'll become familiar with the words and you'll hear them on your test. Note, be especially alert for reversals and negations. Reversal transition. Speakers on the TOEFL IBT may change the direction or logic of the conversation or lecture. They will begin one train of thought and then get away from the main topic. They will then use a phrase that will indicate that they are returning to the main idea, such as, uh, we'll come back to that in a moment, or I don't want to go into that now, or we'll come back to that later. Regardless of the topic, what the professor means by the reversal is that this topic will not be discussed now. Please pay attention because this question type is like a gift from ETS. You will hear them in the test. They'll replay part of the lecture. And then they'll say, why does the professor say this? Uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. The answer is always, regardless of the topic, what the professor means by the reversal is that this topic will not be discussed now. No matter what the other choices say, the choice that you want is the one that's telling us that the professor will not discuss this topic now. This is another gift from ETS. It is negation transitions. Speakers will sometimes use a positive word to indicate a negation. For example, you do understand what I'm saying, right? Or I don't have to explain that, do I? Regardless of the topic, the speaker assumes that the listener knows what the speaker is talking about and that no further discussion or explanation is needed. Again, this is a question in which the test will replay something that the professor said from the passage and then will ask, why does the professor say this? Uh, I don't have to explain that, do I? Regardless of the topic, the answer is that the speaker assumes that the listener knows what the speaker is talking about and that no further discussion or explanation is needed. Tip number five, pay attention to questions being asked. When listening to lectures, anytime a professor asks a question and then answers it themselves or asks a question to a specific student or Anytime a student asks a question, be sure to take notes of the response. This information will often be the topic of one or more questions following the lecture. In conversation, whenever you hear a question by either the student or campus professional, write down the response. That response will often be the answer to one of your questions 
following the conversation. Tip number six, look at photos, drawings, and diagrams. Sometimes during a lecture, the professor will refer to a photo, drawing, or diagram. Be sure to look at the computer screen and take notes of the description or details the professor gives about it. These details the professor gives about the picture will most likely be the answers to a multiple point question that will follow the lecture. Tip number seven, listen for what comes next. In some lectures, the professor will mention what the class will do next. This information can come anytime during the lecture, but usually comes near the end. Make sure to note what the class will do next, as it will definitely be the subject of one of the questions following the passage. For example, the professor might say something like, Okay, class, be sure to take notes and study because we are having a quiz on this lecture tomorrow. The question will ask, what will the class do next? And one of the choices will say that the class will be having a quiz on the lecture tomorrow. Thank you for watching. I hope these tips help you to take fewer notes, but more relevant notes. If you'd like to know more about these tips, please contact me at my email address that's in the description. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you find this video helpful, like, share, and to see more videos, ring the bell. I look forward to reading your comments.